as we have remarked several times earlier the class of upper functions has a deficiency a fu- negative of an upper function need not be an upper function consequently the collection of all upper functions is not a vector space this is not something that we would want to have in a nice theory we remedy this in the stupidest brain dead way possible by defining the lebesgue integrable functions to be simply differences of upper integrable functions so without further ado let's go for the definition let f from i to r be a function we say f is lebesgue integrable lebesgue integrable sometimes just integrable because for the rest of this course we will deal only with uh, the lebesgue integral so sometimes we will just abbreviate it and say just integrable if we can find two upper functions u and v such that f is nothing but the difference u minus v a moment's thought will convince you that because the definition has been formulated in this way it will be automatic that if a function f is lebesgue integrable then so is minus of f in particular you can check it easily by considering f equal to u minus v and observing that negative of f is just v minus u so this defines the collection this defines the collection collection l of i so these are the lebesgue integrable functions lebesgue integrable functions of course we have not yet defined what the integral of such a function is but that's rather easy we just define integral of i f by definition to be integral of i u minus integral of i v okay so the definition has been done in the most straightforward way to fix the obvious deficiency of upper integrable functions now there is a slight problem even with this definition this function f could be written as a difference of two upper integrable functions in a gazillion different ways how do you know all of them are going to give the same integral well that's just an easy check so we have the following proposition proposition uh lebesgue uh the lebesgue integral so of course i didn't mention that this is called the lebesgue integral the lebesgue integral so the lebesgue integral is well defined is well defined on l of i how do you prove this well that's rather easy uh, what you do is what you do is let f be equal to u minus v which is in turn equal to u1 minus v1 where u v u1 v1 are all upper integrable functions okay then we have that u plus u1 is v plus um no uh, i got it wrong we have u plus v1 is nothing but u1 plus v and uh, the sum of two upper integrable functions is thankfully upper integrable uh, therefore what you can conclude is integral over i u plus v1 is integral over i u1 plus v and from the results we have shown for the upper integral we have this is integral over i u plus integral over i v1 and which in turn is equal to integral over i u1 plus integral over i v which immediately shows us that integral of i u minus integral of i v is equal to integral of i u1 minus integral of i v1 which is exactly what we wanted to show so the definition of the lebesgue integral is not problematic no matter what decomposition you choose for this function f then uh, the value of the integral you get is always the same so there is no issue 
In the next video, when we discuss properties of Lebesgue integrable functions, we will show that there are some nice decompositions of a Lebesgue integrable function. In particular, you can take this um, v to be as small as you want, uh, an upper function that is as small as you want. So, in some sense, uh, this Lebesgue integrable functions are almost upper integrable in one sense and another uh, decomposition you can get is you can write f as a sum of a step function plus an integrable function where that integrable function is really small. We will make these uh, vague statements precise in the next video when we study the properties uh, of the Lebesgue integral. Now before we proceed uh, let me just make a remark we already know that uh, the if uh, I mean this should be rather obvious to you if f is upper integrable then obviously f is also Lebesgue integrable and uh, I mean the upper integral coincides upper integral coincides coincides with the Lebesgue integral. This is simply because you can just choose the trivial decomposition f minus 0 for an upper integrable function ok. Moreover, we already know that if f is Riemann integrable, if f is Riemann integrable, then it is upper integrable. That is what we proved in the last video. Then f is upper integrable and both integrals coincide. So, ultimately what this shows is the Riemann integral sort of coincides with the upper integral, but uh, which in turn coincides with the Lebesgue integral. But note one thing. The Riemann integral is sort of directional. You have integral a to b f. You, you have a sort of orientation. If you reverse it and consider integral b to a of the same function, we usually just define it to be negative of that. Okay. Now what we are going to do is even though the Lebesgue integral that we have defined does not in any way use the structure, the order structure of the real numbers, we are going to artificially impose the order structure on the Lebesgue integral. The way we do it is if i is equal to closed interval a comma b here a comma b could also be possibly could be possibly plus minus infinity could be possibly plus minus infinity. If you have if you take the interval like this we define integral of i f the Lebesgue integral over the interval i of f uh, this we also denote by integral a to b f. Okay. Because the Riemann integral agrees with the Lebesgue integral, uh, th this causes no confusion if f is Riemann integrable. And we also define integral b to a f to be minus integral a to b f. Of course, here it is all assumed that a is less than or equal to b. So, we do the same uh, thing that we do for the Riemann integral to define the integral when there is an opposite uh, orientation. Uh, exact same definition we do. So, uh, even though intrinsically the Lebesgue integral does not depend on the order structure, we have artificially introduced the order structure. This will turn out to be very relevant when we study multiple integration. Okay, So, let us now prove some very preliminary properties of the Lebesgue integral theorem. theorem. If f comma g are Lebesgue integrable, then so is a f plus b g and integral of a f plus b g is a integral f plus b integral g. Of course, I must put i everywhere. Okay. In other words, in other words, L of i is a vector space, vector space and and integration integration is a linear functional linear functional on this space okay so i have written out a fancy little statement and i am going to be very devious and say the proof is easy and left to you Really there is, uh, I mean this is not really out of laziness or anything, this is really nothing to do. You just break up f into u minus v, and break up g into let us say u1 minus v1. You already know that uh, upper integrals behave well with respect to sums. 
but only the negative sign is a problem and so on you just manipulate this and elementary algebra and you will get uh, the whole thing you will get that af plus bg first of all the fact that af plus bg is uh, uh, also lebesgue integrable just immediately follows from the decomposition and the fact that uh, this integrals will coincide will follow from a similar argument to what we did for the last the, for the well definedness of the lebesgue integral you just manipulate uh, this algebraically and you will get it there, really there is nothing to do so uh, keep this in mind uh, the lebesgue integral is actually a linear functional on the vector space of lebesgue integrable functions this is sort of like a starting point for the study of the subject called functional analysis where you study spaces of functions we already saw some aspects of this uh, topic when we studied metric spaces where we studied norm vector spaces uh, really the introduction of the lebesgue integral into functional analysis really makes the subject uh, extremely interesting okay so some more properties uh, one disadvantage of upper integrals which i have kept on repeating is that the negative of an upper integral is not uh, upper integrable function is not necessarily upper integrable so what will happen is since the lebesgue integral is defined in terms of the upper integral at the end of the day unless you are really uh, i mean if you want to prove some non trivial theorems what essentially happens is you will end up in situations where you'll have to consider the negative of functions and you won't really know how to deal with it because the negative of that function might not be upper integrable so what you do is there is a standard device that allows us to make all the functions that we are considering positive and this uh, sort of decomposition of a given function will turn out to be a very useful theoretical device in several proofs so given given a function f from i to r it need not be lebesgue integrable or anything you define f plus f plus sort of to be the positive part so what it does is if f at a given point is greater than 0 then uh, you just set this f plus to be f if it's less than 0 you just uh, remove that part so you make it 0 so this is just max of f comma 0 so this function f plus will agree with f whenever it f is greater than or equal to 0 whenever f is less than 0 this f plus will be 0 so all those places where the function f is negative it just pushes that negative value all the way up to 0 so you get a non negative function similarly you define f minus there is a slight twist here you take maximum of minus f comma 0 notice what happens for f minus whenever f is positive whenever f is positive this function will be zero okay but whenever f is negative minus f will become greater than zero therefore this max will become minus f so whenever f is negative it takes the same absolute value of f but uh, yeah it takes i mean whenever uh, f is negative this f minus takes the absolute value of f okay so this discussion should have already made what i'm about to write obvious f is nothing but f plus minus f minus okay and exactly exactly 1 of f plus x or f minus x is greater than 0 uh if mod fx is not equal to 0 and uh in this event in this event in this event uh the one that is positive one that is positive has the value mod f has the va value mod f of x so at a given point where the absolute value does not vanish one of f plus or f minus will be that absolute value and the other will be zero so this second identity will also be obvious to you mod f is nothing but f plus plus f minus okay so these functions f plus and f minus will play an important role in what is about to follow when you essentially want to reduce everything to upper integrals this will become very useful let's illustrate this with a simple fact theorem theorem 
Yeah, this is too basic to call a theorem. Let me just call it a proposition. Proposition. Let f comma g be uh, Lebesgue integrable, uh, Lebesgue uh, integrable functions. Then, so are so are max f comma g and minimum of f comma g. Both these functions are Lebesgue integrable, and uh, uh, so and uh, also f plus f minus and mod f. So all these associated functions are Lebesgue integrable. Proof. Proof. So uh, we let's first deal with uh, how to show that f plus f minus and mod f are Lebesgue integrable. Uh, we know that f is u minus v where u and v are upper integrable functions. This is just the definition of the class. Now notice that f plus would be by definition it will be just minimum of u minus v sorry not minimum maximum maximum of u minus v comma 0. Now let's stare at this and think think for a moment. Let's stare at this max of u minus v comma 0 and let's see whether we can simplify it in some way. There are two possibilities either the max of u and v is u or it is v. If the max of u and v is v, then this whole thing will have to be 0 because u minus v in that event will be negative, right? So if max of u comma v is v, then this whole expression will be 0. So in that case, I can write this as max of u comma v minus v. Why is this correct? Because uh, in the event that v is greater than or equal to u then max of u comma v is v and the second expression and the first expression will just cancel off max u v minus v will be just 0 which is the expected value but hold on a second if max of u comma v is u then this whole thing is uh, going to be just u minus v so in that event max of u comma v is just u and you just get u minus v so in both scenarios this expression is correct so the max of u minus v comma 0 is just max of u comma v minus v, okay? But u and v are upper functions and we have already shown that max preserves upper functions. That is if you take uh, the maximum of two upper functions, you still end up with an upper function. So which shows that f plus, f plus is Lebesgue is in L of i simply because we have exhibited it as the difference of two upper integrable functions, okay? Now, notice that uh, uh, f is f plus minus f minus, right? That's the very definition of f plus, which immediately gives that f minus, uh, sorry, I shouldn't write inverse, f minus is uh, um, f plus minus f but both of these are Lebesgue integrable and therefore f minus is also is also Lebesgue integrable is also Lebesgue integrable finally mod f being just f plus plus f minus is Lebesgue integrable so this was quick. We still have to deal with max f comma g and minimum of f comma g. We completely ignored g and it is feeling very bad. Well, that just follows from the following two basic formulas that you would have probably seen at least once in your life. If not, just prove it. It's not difficult. Max of f comma g is just half of f plus g plus modulus of f minus g and minimum of f comma g is nothing but half of f plus g minus modulus of f minus g. So you can exhibit the maximum and minimum of two functions as an algebraic combination of the two functions along with the absolute value. So you can, uh, these expressions are going to be very useful in many other scenarios as well. So if you have never seen it or never proved it in your life, please do it now. Okay. So. Uh, we have got some uh, useful uh, properties of the Lebesgue integral. Let's proceed and try to see the properties of the Lebesgue integral under ordering. So that's also another proposition. 
let f comma g be Lebesgue integrable then then uh, ah, okay uh, and f greater than or equal to g almost everywhere then integral of i f greater than or equal to integral of i g if f equal to g almost everywhere then integral of i f is equal to integral of i g well the second part is uh, rather trivial you can just um, uh, show it by um, using the first part twice so let's just deal with the first part so the first part asks us to consider f and g with f greater than or equal to g almost everywhere so of course write f as u minus v and g as u1 minus v1 with uh, u comma v comma u1 comma v1 all upper functions upper integrable functions okay now uh, what we do is the following we know that uh, uh, f is greater than or equal to g almost everywhere so that will give us that u minus v is greater than or equal to u1 minus v1 almost everywhere right which would in turn give that u minus v minus u1 minus v1 is greater than or equal to 0 almost everywhere okay so in other words uh, I actually I, I don't want to rewrite it like this I want to rewrite it in a better way so that taking into account that the negative of an upper function is not necessarily an upper function so you just write it as u plus v1 is greater than or equal to u1 plus v almost everywhere which in turn gives that integral of u plus v1 i is greater than or equal to integral u1 plus v this simply follows because the upper functions behave will well with respect to ordering now you break this up integral of i u plus integral of i v1 is greater than or equal to integral of i u1 plus integral of i v which immediately gives that integral of i u minus integral of i v is greater than or equal to integral of i u1 minus integral of i v1 as claimed so the Lebesgue integral also behaves well with respect to ordering. Uh, the second part as I remarked is quite easy. Now uh, one more proposition, one more proposition and this is also not so hard. What this proposition says is let f be a Lebesgue integrable function then, then the absolute value of the integral is less than or equal to the integral of the absolute value okay how does one prove this well observe that uh, uh, we have minus mod f of x is less than or equal to f of x is less than or equal to mod f of x and since f is Lebesgue integrable both minus f minus mod f and plus mod f are both Lebesgue integrable so you get integral minus mod f over i is less than integral over i f is less than or equal to integral over i mod f okay and you can take the minus sign outside from the first expression you can take the minus sign outside and you will get this this is the same as saying that integral of i mod f is less than or equal to integral i mod f exactly i mean it's just rephrasing the same thing so these are some nice properties of the Lebesgue integral there are some more properties that are there in the exercises that is to do with the invariance of the Lebesgue integral under translation and the behavior of the Lebesgue integral under expansion or contraction those exercises are all straightforward you just have to uh, use the same algorithm for proving those exercises you have to first show these things for step functions and then show them for upper functions then show them for Lebesgue integrable functions the proofs are there are no real idea involved in the proofs you just have to successively increase the class of functions for which the result is true and each step is really trivial so please solve that exercise it will be very useful in the next video we shall see some more properties of the Lebesgue integral this is a course on real analysis and you have just watched the video on Lebesgue integrable functions Thank you.